Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Z Network Lessons. My name is Paral Taf Qureshi and I welcome you all to my uh, training on Cisco ASA. Uh, we have almost done 10 lessons on Cisco ASA and now we covered um, uh, the basic, um, uh, I mean, uh, concepts of Cisco ASA, like the security levels, policies, um, and netting as well. In our last video, we have uh, talked about the uh, destination net, uh, which is part of the auto net. And also we have seen um, dynamic net and also the um, static net. But there are two more um, NATs that are part of auto NAT as well, um, which is the dynamic pad and the static pad, which are uh, which of uh, I mean, uh, which we are going to do in this uh, video of today. So I'll cover those topics as well. But all these NATs are part of the um, if you see the bigger picture, it's part of the section which is called auto NAT. Uh, you might have seen when I type show NAT details or show NAT, you will see sections. Okay, section one, section two, section three. There are three sections. The manual, uh, I mean, the manual uh, policy section, the the auto NAT and the uh, section three. So these are like preferences. The manual NAT will get the first preference, then the auto NAT, then the uh, section three. Okay, so let's uh, start with the uh, this uh, dynamic pad, right? Uh, we'll go with dynamic pad, then we'll go with um, static pad, and and I'll do the theory plus demonstration like I do. So let's get started. So first, what I have is the um, Pat, let me grab my pen then. Okay, so till now what we did, uh, until now we did the dynamic NAT, right? The dynamic NAT. So what did we do in the dynamic NAT is we had a pool of IP address, which is 192.1.20.0250. We had a range, almost 50 IP addresses, 50 public IP address, uh, which is a kind of luxury in today's world because, uh, this will cost you money. You have to uh, register um, with IANA to get these IP addresses. Uh, and, and then what happened is whatever IP address, I mean, whatever um, uh, say devices from this range, they wanted to go say for example source, then I'll keep destination. So this is the table that it kept. Kind of, let's take only two. So for example, I have 10.1. Uh, sorry, 10.11.11. .11 .11 say 31 wanted to go to 8.8.8.8. Yeah. And then this guy also wanted to go. Uh, I mean, there was another uh, user, let's say 50, wanted to go to again say DNS. Yeah. And then what happened is on the ASA, it kept the translation table and it it translated the source to some uh, IP from the pool, right? First come, first serve base, uh, first come, um, first serve base and um, destination remained the same. Likewise, the second guy who came got the next IP from the pool, right? So say two and 888. So this is how it was. It was tracking all these connections tables, right? Like this. So whenever anybody came, uh, the return traffic came to say this, um, I mean, this was the source, it translated to this guy. And if uh, this was the source, it got translated to this guy. And that is how the uh, whole um, um, traffic used to flow. But I mean, you could easily run out of IP addresses in situations like this, because say you have a slash 24 here, then you have around 254 uh, clients here. Then again, you might have multiple subnets, right? You can have the wireless uh, subnet. You can have the wired subnet. You can have the sales subnet. You can have finance subnet. You can have so many subnets, right? So how, how to, I hope I have the yeah, spelling is correct. So how to um, go on with a situation like this? So the best way to handle this is the pad. Let me just clear my uh, window here. So let me just demonstrate to you how pad works. So now again, just think we have this. Now, now pad uses only one IP address. 
you can assign multiple IP addresses and have a fa fallback of fat like this. But in general, you have one IP address. You can have use the external IP address as well. So what happens is now, now in this case, you have the source, you have the destination as well. Now just imagine the same table. Okay, this 11.11. .11 I hope 31. Just imagine this guy. Again, he's going to go out. And there is another guy, 10, 11, 11 dot, say 50. So these two people are going to destination 8 dot, 8 dot, 8 dot, 8. This is also going to 8 dot, 8 dot, 8 dot, 8. So apart from the source and the destination, the uh, firewall keeps the source port and the destination port in this case. Yeah, so source port can be random. I mean, not can be, it is random, one, two, three, four, and say five, six, nine, eight, something like that. But destination port is dependent on the service that you are going to access. So for example, if you go for the D, uh, DNS 53, for example, you're going to um, HTTP, yeah? web, web services, HTTP or 443. So that is that will always be application specific. Yeah, so that is the, traffic that is trying to go from in to out now once it hits the asa once it hits the asa now now the table will be different now the translation will happen and now you have the translated address of 192 1.20.10 say for example that is the ip address of my uh, interface here so this person this this guy has been changed to this IP plus it has the port number plus the destination is same and the destination port is also the, uh, sorry, this is 53, right? 53, yeah. So this is how it looks like now. There's the source IP, source port, destination IP and destination port. And then the next person that comes, again, the same IP, 10, but the port is 5698. And, and um, then you have the destination IP. Say in this case, it's the same destination IP, but a different port. Yeah. So that is how the firewall keeps track of the source IP and the source port, destination IP and the destination. So now imagine that the return traffic hits the firewall and it checks the source IP is 20.10. Yeah, I mean, I mean, sorry, not 20.10. Uh, it will it will be the flip side. So source is 8888. Yeah, and the uh, port is like 80. And we'll check. Okay, I have this table, so I have to translate to this IP with this port. Yeah. So, I mean, after the ASA does the port translation, it can change the port uh, source port as well, but it will keep, keep track of that port. So I, if I, if I change this port, what was the original port? If, if you check the connection table, it will have the original port, not the change port. Okay. Original port in the, in the connection table. But in the X uh, translation table, it will be the change port. But um, in most case, this will be the same. Okay. So I mean, there are uh, these two are different. Uh, these two these two type of paths have different terminologies. Uh, the first one, which uh, wherein you don't change the port, is called port forwarding. So you are not. I mean. Um, changing the ports, you're just forwarding the ports. And wherein you change it, it's called the port translation. A simple exam example would be, uh, you might have seen, um, there is a server um, I mean, uh, on the internet, or you have a server inside your uh, DMZ, inside your corporate network, which is serving the um, web traffic on port 80. But you don't want people to know it's I mean, on the outside, on port 80. So you tell your, I mean, people 
uh, if you want to um, access this service, uh, do one thing, do access this on a public IP address of 192.120.50, but the port will be 8080. And this will be then translated to 80 in the inside. So this is port translation. Okay, so let's do the dynamic um, pad first, and then we will do the uh, static pad. And the difference is dynamic pad, dynamic pad has the ports uh, dynamically assigned, right? But in static pad, we, we do it manually. We say that this is the port, uh, which, which you should listen. As I said, this one, this, this is static port. So from the outside, if you want somebody to um, to access your servers and you don't have much uh, IP addresses. So, so you will use the port numbers to segregate the, uh, the services. So for example, you have a web server, you will be listening on port 8080 and it will be uh, listening on port 80 in the inside. And likewise you have, or you can save 80 and 80. So that is port forwarding. Okay. Then uh, you, you may have um, a, a server which is listening for DNS. So say 50, 53, 53, or maybe 5053 or you can have say telnet likewise so that is your static pad so let's start with the um, dynamic pad let me just clear this uh, here okay now um, so i should have the asa here yeah i have asa and then i should have the R1 here. So what we will do is we will do a pad. Okay, I need to initialize the, uh, I think AC is configured. If I see show interface IP brief, yeah, it's there and show NAT if I see it's there, no. Show access list, uh, no, show run, access list if i see to have no so i have the um ip address configured that means i can ping the outside router 1.20.2 yeah that is configured so i don't have the uh inside so let's do one thing what i'll do is so if i want to go to uh go from inside to outside on r2 say tcp so i'll um enable telnet on r2 but then I need, um, because, because R2 will not be able to uh, have a route back towards this, uh, uh, this uh, R1, right? Because I will not set up a, a route there. So what will happen is it will be translated to the external IP address of the firewall. That is dot 10, 192.1.20.10. And on R2, if you check, uh, you will see that it is ACS IP that is, SSH, uh, I mean, telnetting into the R2. So yeah, so let's see how it goes. Uh, it's quite simple. It is like the, um, okay, let's, it's like the dynamic net that we do, that we did config T. Um, so first of all, I'll change the host name to R1. Yeah, then interface gigabit, gigabit, uh, I think, Zero, zero by zero, no shut. IP address 10.11.11.1, and zero, that is fine. And I should have a interface loop back, uh, say 10, uh, yeah. Then IP address 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 uh, with the subnet mask of slash 24. So that is, there, then I should have interface loop back 20 with an IP address of 10.20.20.1255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255255
on R2 if I go and enable terminal. Okay, enable show run section VTY. I don't think I have telnet enabled. Yeah, it is there, it is there. So if I do a telnet from inside to outside, that uh, should be allowed because that is the default behavior because TCP uh, will be inspected, right? So telnet, uh, before that I will do a, on R2, I will do a debug, debug IP packet details. Okay, so I'll do a telnet to 192, 1.20.2. Uh, Before that, if I do this, this will not work because I don't have a route on, on the mm, router. Show IP route, if I check, I don't have a default route, so it will be dropped on the router itself. So I'll configure a default route, IP route, 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, and I will, configure uh, ASA as the next hop. Okay, then that is done. Now, then again, uh, I need to go on the, no, no, for that, for this traffic, I don't need to, because my, I mean, ASA knows the 192.120.2 uh, subnet. So 192.1.20.2. So this will go to R2, but it will fail because um, R2 doesn't know how to reach 10, 11, 11, 1 because I'm not doing natting. So now let's do PAT and let's see how this works. On this, Control X. Okay. Now uh, on the on R1, I don't need to do anything. On the ACA, I need to do the configuration. This is quite simple. So what you do is you configure the, uh, again, the object network like we did. Object network say inside, this is my uh, LAN, inside LAN, enter. And then you say the subnet. So for me, subnet is 10.11.11.0. And then you check the, uh, uh, the mask 255 255 2550. So this is my host. Then you say the NAT statement again, the high and the low. So high is my inside, inside, and then the low is my outside, right? And then you say dynamic, and then you can say the interface or the IP address. If I say interface, then I have to say the, um, uh, I mean, if I, I can just click enter here. Yeah, this will automatically take the outside interface. But what I can do also as well is I can have a static IP from the outside. I mean, from the public side, uh, from the ISP, they can give me a single IP address or, or maybe a range of IP address. So I will, I will just take this, um, say 55. Okay. So what will happen when I uh, configure interface or the or a single IP address, the ASA is smart enough that it knows that it has to do patting. Okay, so I'll do exit. Now, if you see show X late, uh, you should see the, uh, you, you don't have the translations as of now because this is dynamic. Show NAT details. See, you have the details of the NAT and again, you can see this is the auto NAT section, right? Section number two. So you can see you have this pool, um, uh, I mean this uh, inside uh, subnet, which will be translated to this IP address. Okay, so let's go and test the same um, telnet that was not working earlier. Now, if I go here, so now you can see that this is receiving from the source of 55. Wait a second, encapsulation failed. Let me check what is the issue here. On the AC, if I go, oh, um, it should not be an AC issue. Show connection if I do here and show accelerate if I do here, I should have a NAT. So now you can see that I have a NAT from inside with this source and it is going to outside on this 
pat right so from outside when you come inside you will be translated to this ip address so this is the uh, reverse i mean the but if a show if you show con a con is not working th that is the issue that my connection is not working let's again try this telnet to 1.20 and now it's open now i need to see the con now i can see the connection and I, now i can see the original port numbers 190 see 23 is the telnet right and this is the uh, uh, the uh, source port number again if you see xlate it will it'll change it has changed and is expecting this i uh, return traffic i mean from this guy it's uh, expecting the return traffic so this is the translation uh so this is the dynamic pool uh, sorry pat dynamic pat wherein you can have multiple uh, uh, i mean ip address from the inside going to the outside now let's just um, do this if if there was another um, i mean subnet okay so how do you do this so you again go um, and say object network so let's do this for this 10 10 10 1 right object network so say for example this is my wlan wireless lan right uh yeah wireless lan and i will say subnet 10.10.10.0255255255050 so this is my uh, uh subnet and then i'll say nat the high interface which is my inside to going to outside and again dynamic and then the ip address 192.1.20.55 this time again the same ip address enter for oh, that overlaps with the pool oh i cannot do that in the dynamic yeah so that is that done i can i can do this on the interface level as well okay so let's do this for the interface so all the pool members if i have anybody uh, from this pool and they will be able to go using 55 and another pool will be able to go using the external ip address so let's go here and uh, on r1 now if i do the same telnet but with the with the source of loopback 10 this time so this is a different ip address now trying to reach the external um, on 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 r2 so if you see this is my source wait a second so what i need to do is i need to go and change the pool so if i go here exit i have done some uh, configurations i mean there are uh, overlapping configurations here so i can see interface uh, w lan and your uh, inside lan that is fine we do only show nat and then um include nat so i have the dynamic and the this one uh yeah these are the two statements that i am looking forward to so i have one which says inside lan if going to the dynamic so that is fine that should be fine i think i have my um this already running so who's that this is 2.10 trying to reach my a say is continuously trying to reach this so a say if i go here and clear connection con session okay I've done the clear connections here but i don't know what traffic is let's let's stop this on here i will do a you all okay now let's see what what traffic is this ip address uh source is this going to 2.10 and and then and, and, and again this is r2 r2 going to telnet 
I don't know, maybe that traffic is continuously, uh, this is R1 to R2. I, I had an inside to outside R1, right? This one. So let's again do the, this one. And let's see the same traffic on, on ASA. Show X late if we see, I don't have for the 10, yeah, I have this for 10, 10. So I have this for 10, 10. Earlier it was 10, 11. Now it's going outside on the 10, uh, on the interface of the AC 10, 10. And then I have the NAT details also. So you can see the translations going on, on this one hits two. Yeah, you can see. So that is how it's, uh, I mean, working out. Yeah, I should, I mean, do this uh, once or twice. I don't know why this, so I need to check uh, on the route, show route here. So I, do I have a route? No, I don't have a route. I mean, if you just imagine of this traffic, so this traffic, the second one that we are trying right now is a source of 10.10.10.1 going to 192.1.20.2. This is R2. Uh, so the port is 23. This will be some random port here. I'm not bothered about the port right now. But the translation that happens is 192.1.20.10 uh, going to 192.1.20.2. So this router should not have any issues returning um, and replying for this. And then when it gets the AC, AC knows, okay, AC doesn't know about 10, 10, 10, 1. So that is the issue there. We don't have a route for that. So let's clear it and uh, okay, clear, stop. And I will have a route for ASA. Uh, I'll say a route inside 10.10.10.0255255250. Go to 10.11.11.1. So that is the route that we need for this traffic to function. So if I do this again, this is open. And I think the password is Cisco or Cisco one, two, three, maybe. Yeah, if you check the show users, this will be the external interface. The dot 10. Yeah, and yeah, you can see dot 10. Yeah, you again go and check the show X late you'll see the dot tens there. And if you see the show connection, you'll see the original ports there, 23 and 38350. So that is your dynamic path. Yeah. Um, I mean, this video is getting longer and longer. I will uh, cover the static path in, an, in, in another video. But dynamic pad, what does it do? Just an overview again. Dynamic pad allows multiple inter internal devices to go out to the internet using a single, uh, I mean, uh, single public IP. Yeah. Um, the translation table uses randomly, I um, mean, um, generated source port and uh, in the translation table to keep the uh, translations. That is what the um, dynamic pad is. So that's it for this video. Um, Hope you understood the uh, the uh, concept of dynamic path, and also the demonstration that I showed to you is is somewhat uh, understandable to you. But what I would recommend is to do as I do it. Uh, you you set up this lab and uh, do, follow uh, follow me on 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 to the uh, I mean command line and and do it yourself. And that's how you will be uh, having more clarity on it. And if you have any questions, just drop a comment in my video. Uh, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel as much as possible. And thank you for um, this video. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.